I'm gonna try and hold myself back a little bit because I really like this watch. This is my first time taking a look at a piece from Notice Watches, and they made a pretty good first impression. Today we're checking out the Notice Sector Pilot. Let's take a look. Hey guys, welcome back to Just The Watch. My name's Dave, I live in Japan, and I love to collect affordable watches. I've been doing this channel for a few years now, and early on when I first started, Notice was actually one of the brands that I was most interested in. I really liked the look of their Retrospect Diver, but I never actually got a chance to take a look at it. Not only am I drawn to their designs, I'm also drawn to the fact that they're based in Los Angeles, California, which is not far from where I grew up. And I love the idea that not only are they based in Los Angeles, but that they also do all of their assembly in California. Now, I'm kind of a sucker when it comes to pilot's watches. They are my favorite style of watch, and this one is just beautifully executed. It features a really cool design that is kind of a modern reinterpretation of the sector dial paired up with modest case dimensions that will make it wear well pretty much regardless of how big or small your wrist is, and a really solid build quality. And all of that is really making this one of my favorite watches that I've been sent in. It's definitely one that I'm gonna be holding on to and keeping for myself. Now, in order to facilitate this review, Notice did give me this watch for free. However, other than the watch itself, they didn't provide any other compensation for this review, nor did they have any input into the content of their review. On the flip side, this watch does cost a little bit more than comparably spec micro brands, which I think is primarily a consequence of that California-based assembly. Anyways, we're gonna get into all of that and more, but first let's take a look at the dimensions, specifications, and that price. The case of the Notice Sector Pilot is 38 millimeters across. However, the bezel is a little bit wider at 39 millimeters. Lug to lug is 47 millimeters. You're getting 20 millimeter lugs, 12.5 millimeters thick, 100 meters of water resistance with a screw down crown, a regulated Seiko NH36 movement, and a sapphire crystal. Price on this watch, you can pick it up for $500 from Notice's website. All right, I know what a lot of you guys are thinking right now. $500 for a Seiko NH36 powered micro brand watch seems a little bit high. But again, you gotta keep in mind that this watch is not manufactured in China, it's manufactured in California in the United States, and the cost of labor there is significantly more expensive. And this extra cost is not only understandable given the location that it is, I think it actually does come with some significant benefits, particularly for people who do live in the United States. Not only does Notice assemble their watches in California, they also regulate each movement before sending it out. And so while doing this does increase the cost of the watch, I think it also provides some tangible benefits. So while the movements offered here are pretty standard Seiko NH36 movements, which aren't really that exciting to most people. Because Notice has taken the extra step to regulate these movements before sending them out, they're going to be running far more accurately than most Seiko NH36 movements. Right out of the factory, a Seiko NH36 movement has a stated accuracy of between negative 20 seconds and plus 40 seconds per day. And while most of the time you're going to be getting a movement that's much more accurate than that, it is a little bit of a dice roll. You can wind up getting a movement that runs negative 20 seconds a day or up to plus 40 seconds a day, and that would be considered a perfectly normal movement. Regulation is a process of fine tuning the movement to get the most accuracy out of it. And if the manufacturer doesn't do it for you, you could take it to a watchmaker or if you have the skills, you could do it yourself. So for a watch manufacturer to regulate the movement for you, that really does add a significant amount of value to the watch and it pretty much guarantees that you're going to get a movement with a pretty high level of accuracy. And the watch that Notice sent over is running at a pretty astounding plus 1.2 seconds per day. And at that rate, that means it's gonna be almost two months before the movement is even a minute off, which is really impressive for an automatic movement, especially for a Seiko NH36, which is a very basic movement. And on top of this, because Notice does the regulation themselves, that means that they are training and that they have watchmakers on staff in Los Angeles that can do these kinds of upkeep and repairs to the watches that they send out. They don't have to rely on experts in other countries or even other companies, which means that they should be able to give you a better level of support than they otherwise would be able to. 
On my YouTube community feed, I asked people to comment on their experience with Notice watches, and overwhelmingly people had very good, very positive experiences with their support with many people saying they're looking forward to buying more watches from Notice in the future, in large part because of the support experiences that they had. So particularly for people living in the US, having a watch manufacturer who is based in the United States, being able to offer this level of support and expertise is a very tangible benefit. It means that you're gonna be able to get service faster and your watch isn't gonna have to go through the postal service being sent overseas. So I do think because of these reasons, that added cost of doing the regulation and the assembly in California is really justified. You're going to have to pay a little bit more up front, but you also get some added peace of mind. And if you're an American like me and you want to see U.S. watchmaking kind of make a comeback, this is a great way to support it. So for me, I think that little bit of extra cost is definitely worth it. But it is something that each person is gonna to have to kind of decide for themselves. But like I said earlier, it doesn't really matter where they assembled the watch if the watch itself isn't any good. And so even more than the fact that this watch comes from Los Angeles, I absolutely love the design of this thing. Now the Notice Sector Pilot draws its name from the fact that this watch utilizes a sector dial layout. This is a style that has its roots going back to the early 1900s, and it basically refers to a dial that has kind of been segmented with the use of rings or concentric circles. Notice has done sort of a modern reinterpretation of this design, and rather than printing the sectors onto this dial, they've done it with the use of textures and layers. The inner portion of the dial is sunk in a little bit and it has a very rough texture. As you work your way towards the outer portion of the dial, there's a slight step up into kind of a more smooth brushed area of the dial. And it's in this ring where you're gonna find the very crisp white embossed Arabic markers. Finally, working out to the very outer edge, you have a rehot that has a printed ring that holds minute or second counters on it. And adding just another layer of interest, this rehot has cutouts at 12, three, six, and nine. And in the 12 o'clock cutout, you find the Notice logo cleverly hidden in there. I really like the font that they've used for the numbers and how they've slightly enlarged the 12, three, and nine numerals. And they've paired this perfectly with a really classic looking set of hands. I'm particularly impressed with both the second and minute hand at how close they get to the edge of the dial. It almost looks like they're gonna be scratching up against the edge of that rehot. Another notable design element is the day and date display that you get in the six o'clock area of the watch. They've stacked the two on top of each other with the date display going in the outer ring where the six o'clock marker would be and the day display comfortably nested above it in the inner ring. And this is a layout that I haven't really seen very much, but it just looks so pleasing and perfect to the eye. Overall, the dial is very legible with a beautiful blue background and a very crisp white hue to the hands and markers. The different surfaces and levels are just a real joy to look at. And it really is one of my favorite dial designs that I've seen on a pilot's watch. This watch also features a very unique bezel. It has a countdown timer rather than an elapsed time bezel. And this is a bi-directional friction-based bezel. So it turns smoothly in either direction with no clicks, which allows you to set your countdown timer quickly and easily. Countdown bezels are a little bit rare, but I think a lot of people actually will find them more useful in day-to-day -day life than an elapsed time bezel. And using it is very simple. For instance, if you want to set a 10 minute timer, all you would do is line up the 10 on the bezel with the minute hand. And from that moment on, the minute hand is gonna be displaying how many minutes you have left until your 10 minute timer is over. And I find myself using this feature all the time when I'm wearing this watch. Now this bezel did take a little bit of time to get used to, not just for the fact that it's a countdown timer instead of an elapsed time bezel, but also that bi-directional friction action also took a little bit of getting used to. It is pretty tight, and I think that's probably a good thing. This is definitely not the kind of thing that's gonna get knocked loose. The bezel being too loose is something that I've seen pretty commonly on other friction-based bezels. However, this does require more force to operate than I'm used to. Now, beyond just the dial and functionality of the design, I really love the case design that they've gone with as well. The case has a very substantial and solid look and feel to it, while at the same time maintaining some beautiful finishing with this a great, broad, beveled, polished surface along the top of the lugs, an elegant curve that helps it to conform well to the wrist, and drilled lug openings to make strap changes even easier. They've paired the watch up with a very solid, somewhat hefty four link stainless steel bracelet. The angled links do have a little bit of kind of an aviation feel to them that I think really matches well with the character of the watch. They've gone above and beyond and provided you with screw pins to make sizing very easily. 
This watch also features a very solid milled clasp, which curiously is completely unbranded, but it looks very nice and has some nice finishing to it. And the bracelet also features quick release spring bars to make strap changes very easy. However, those quick release spring bars do come with one little problem, which I'll get to when we get to the con section. Finally, let's talk about the sapphire crystal because this is another kind of unique feature of this watch. This is a domed sapphire crystal. However, the doming is on the underside of the crystal. So the top of the crystal is perfectly flat. It rises slightly above the bezel with a very nice bevel along the edge of it. And that bevel combined with the doming on the underside really helps the watch to look cool at extreme angles as you're looking at it on your wrist. And again, just adds that much more character to a watch that is already pretty packed with character. And flipping around to the backside, you have a closed case back with a very simple but tasteful design, kind of highlighting the fact that this watch is a part of Notice's Sector series. Finally, this watch features a signed kind of diamond-shaped crown, which is slightly oversized and completes the aviation stylings of this watch. Overall, the watch looks and feels amazing with a very sturdy build quality, as well as a great feel on the wrist. I really love the proportions of this watch. I love how they've gone with a 38 millimeter case and then a 39 millimeter bezel. The case design, case size, and the lug to lug all are gonna help this watch wear really well on a wide variety of wrists. It's a fairly modest size for a pilot's watch, but I think it totally works with this style. The only issue that I had with the wearability is that it is a fairly heavy watch for this size, especially on the stainless steel bracelet. And so if you wear this watch a little bit loose, you're definitely gonna feel it kind of moving around on your wrist quite a bit. Now, another thing we need to talk about is the loom because we always need to talk about the loom. And Notice has done something interesting with the loom on this watch. If you're familiar with different loom formulations, you're probably gonna assume that this is BGW9. However, they have it listed as C1X1. And that refers to the formulation of Swiss Superluminova loom that's applied to this watch. C1 is one that you don't hear of too often. The most common ones you see are C3, which glows green in the dark, and BGW9, which glows blue in the dark. Both of those glow very brightly in the dark. However, in daylight, they do have a little bit of a colored tint to them. Both of them are slightly off-white. C1, on the other hand, is a very pure white. However, it typically is far less bright than either C3 or BGW9. Now, that pure white looks great, especially on this dark blue dial. You get a great contrast and just a very sharp, crisp look. But rather than just using Superluminova's normal C1 formulation, they've gone with the X1 grade. X1 grade is sort of an upgrade that Superlumino does to some of their formulations to make them last longer. And before I saw this watch, I wasn't even aware that Superlumino had started putting out an X1 grade of C1. So I'm really curious to see how this one performs. Let's check it out. All right, let's jump right in with the comparison test here. On the left, we have the Escapement Time Fleer, which has BGW9. In the middle, we have the Notus Sector Pilot, which as noted, has that C1 X1. And on the right, we have a Flieger from Loco, which has... C3. Now, right off the bat, I think it's clear that the initial brightness of the C3 on the Loco is definitely the brightest of the three. However, if you run this test out for the full hour, which is what I always do, the loom on the Notice Sector Pilot shows that it has a lot of staying power. The hands are easily the brightest of the three watches, and while the markers are pretty dim, if you take the average of the hands and markers like I always do on my J scores, this one comes out ahead with a J score of 8, beating out the BGW9 on the Escape in Time Flieger and the C3 on the Loco. I would say that the hand brightness on this watch is excellent for a pilot's watch. You're definitely going to be able to tell the time based on the hands alone for a pretty long time after dark. However, the brightness on the numerals is somewhat disappointing. That fades pretty quickly and after maybe 20 minutes to a half an hour, you're going to have a pretty hard time seeing anything other than the hands and that loom pip that's also surprisingly bright on the bezel. But basically what this test shows is that the loom on the Notice Sector Pilot is just a little bit above average compared to other comparably priced pilot's watches. But I would say for the $500 asking price here, I would have hoped that it would have been excellent loom instead of just a little bit above average. So it, it kind of comes across a little bit disappointing to me. Finally, we got to wrap up this review by talking about the negatives of this watch. Despite all the things that I love about this watch, there were a few things I think could use some improvement. Probably the biggest challenge people are going to have with this watch is the price. Many people are going to look at this and compare it to other micro brands and they're going to find that this watch seems to be under for the amount of money that you're paying. 
But we've already kind of been through this. With only a couple of exceptions, the micro brands that give you the best bang for the buck do all of their production in China where the cost of labor is way cheaper than Los Angeles, California. So if you don't care about the place where the watch is built or the benefits that come along with having the brand based in your area of the world and the regulation that Notice does to their movements, if those things don't matter to you, then sure, there's gonna be brands that are gonna give you a better value than this. Now, that aside, I did have two kind of small issues with the build quality of the watch. The first and more significant of the two is that the bracelet has a tendency to kind of get caught on its own quick release spring bars. The quick release spring bar system on the bracelet has two little pins that you can press together to disengage the bracelet from the watch head itself. And if you lay the bracelet flat against the back of the watch, for instance, if you're stuffing it into a watch roll, I've found that the bracelet often gets stuck on those two pins, making it somewhat difficult to straighten the bracelet back out. In order to get it unstuck, you kind of got to press the bracelet up against the back of the case and sort of slide it upwards and then that will rotate it around those pins at an angle that allows the bracelet to easily come free of that but it kind of took me a while to figure that out. The other issue that I had was much more minor and that's that the crown just feels a little bit mushy. Normally with a screw down crown, when you unscrew it all the way, there's kind of a little springy pop at the end that lets you know that it's been completely unscrewed from the case. But on this watch, that tactile feedback kind of isn't there. So it's a little hard to tell when you fully unscrewed the crown. I found both of these issues to be kind of annoying, but neither kept me from really enjoying the watch. Now, whether or not those things are going to bother you is a completely different story. For me personally, I've been tremendously impressed at what Notice has put together here. In a lot of ways, I almost feel like they're reading my mind. I mean, to me, this is just like so close to the perfect watch that I've been wanting. So drop me a comment down below. Let me know what you think of this watch. And particularly, let me know what you think of the idea of US-based assembly in watches and kind of bringing back American watch manufacturing. Is that something that interests you? Is that something that you find value in? Or do you just want the best bang for the buck? That's gonna wrap it up for today. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.